cars with internal combustion engines will be dead by 2035? Or with what Porsche have been working on, might that solve all our worries and problems? In this video, I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about a solution Porsche has come up with that might save combustion engines from going extinct. But first guys, take a look at this graph. Only 1% of viewers are subscribed. Like, come on, 99% of you are not subscribed. We are so close to getting this channel to 1,000 subscribers. If that happens, I can start putting more money and production value into these videos. So quickly, subscribe now. Governments all over the world have been causing problems against us petrol heads. It's one thing to give you a tax break if you buy a zero emissions car. Cool. But lots of countries have already decided to ban the sale of petrol and diesel powered cars completely in these coming years. This covers everything from Porsches, Ferraris, Audis, even tyre Priuses. But why is this? All the way back in 2017, the UK government set out a plan to ban the sale of cars with petrol and diesel engines after 2040. That was surprisingly enough. But listen guys, it gets worse. The government has published plans to ban the sale of new diesel and petrol cars and vans from 2040. The Environment Secretary, Malcolm Gove, announced the move as part of a major new strategy to cut air pollution. The government then decided to bring the ban forward by 10 years to 2030, with plug-in hybrids going off sale a following five years later in 2035. This meaning cars you buy from 2035 onwards will either be battery powered or run off hydrogen fuel cells. Other places and countries decided to join in with this plan too, the state of California, Canada and even the European Union. However, this caused major problems across the whole of the car makers world. They were not too happy about this. But this got other people smiling and very happy. I'm sure you can guess who. Yeah, this guy. He owns Twitter now. Other big car companies such as BMW, Audi and Toyota have already started producing products to meet these new demands come 2035. Maybe they were getting a bit worried and wanted just a little bit of a head start. BMW have produced X and E model vehicles such as the i3, i4, X3X and the new launches of the E7 and i5, which all started off around 10 years ago, so they've had a very good head start with the i3 being BMW's first electric car all the way back in 2013. Audi produced the e-tron, which was unveiled in Frankfurt back in 2015, with its first production revealed in San Francisco in September 2018, and the first delivery made as of May 2019, being the company's first battery electric mass production car. So, of course, they develop and they want to get as much usage out of these cars as possible, you know, to maximise profits. However, big company bosses are saying it's easy enough for the car manufacturers to produce all these fantastic electric cars. But right now, the world doesn't live in a big enough state of renewable energy. The access to raw materials is limited at the moment, which, shock horror, we don't have all those things right now. So, on the one hand, you have governments wanting to reduce CO2 emissions from privately owned cars, and on the other hand, you have some of the biggest car companies in the world saying that banning the sale of combustion engines isn't the best way to do this. Well, let's be honest, of course they'll say that. They want to sell both electric and combustion cars. They just want to maximise profits. Until last week, when the EU legislations allowed for car makers to continue the sales of combustion engines past 2035, under one condition, something called synthetic fuel. Now, enough about electric cars, and if you're like me, and you want to hear about how combustion car engines can go past 2035, and you can still hear those V12s and loud exhaust systems, right? Well, I'm going to tell you how that's possible with some help called synthetic fuel. Now, you're probably wondering, what the devil is synthetic fuel? That's where a car maker from Germany called Porsche comes in. Petrol and diesel are made from oil right? The oil is drilled out of the ground, it's made from organic materials that has been compressed in our earth for over a million years, which a lot of you refer to as fossil fuels. Synthetic fuels are completely man-made. You don't have to drill wells to get them out of the ground or from bones from a dinosaur that couldn't clap his hands if he was happy and they know it. These fuels were originally invented around 100 years ago. Since then, this technology has been fine-tuned and developed by countries which are now calling e-fuel. The important thing about e-fuel is that it can help turn any car with an internal combustion engine into a carbon neutral vehicle, meaning you can launch your Audi R8 down the road, making all the noise you want while producing zero carbon emissions. If you want to watch my review on the latest Audi R8, click in the top right corner right now. 
So, how does this work? Science lesson time. If fuels are made using carbon dioxide that's been recovered from the atmosphere or captured as waste from factories, you can then use renewable energy to produce hydrogen from water through a process called electrolysis. Then you combine these two together to produce methanol fuel. This can be reproduced into petrol, so it can be burned into a normal internal combustion engine without any modifications. In fact, a company called Port in Chile is testing this fuel using its own range of cars and is working with fuel brands to make racing fuel for the 911 GT3 racing cars in the Mobile One Super Cup. But here's the clever part. The carbon dioxide that gets released has already been particularly offset because the e-fuel production process takes carbon out of the atmosphere in the first place. So, on a global scale, e-fuels have the potential to be a carbon neutral and reduce global CO2 emissions in order to help stop climate change. That's it then, let's produce e-fuel for the whole world, meaning we can do away with electric cars and car makers can keep producing combustion engines. Well, it's not that simple. The current port factory produces 130,000 litres of fuel per year, and all of that goes into powering the 911 GT3 racing cars in the Mobile One Super Cup. Porsche paid a small amount of 82 million to fund this project. Porsche does claim they are able to increase production, if needed to, by 2026, to be able to have 55 million litres of e-fuel. Now you're probably wondering, that's a fair amount, right? So how much do we need? Well, let's take the US for example. That country requires around 522 billion litres of fuel every year. So after a few calculations, you're just going to need a shy amount of, oh, 10,000 factories producing e-fuel a year. But wait, there's more. Synthetic fuels like e-tolls are only carbon neutral if the electricity used to make them comes from renewable zero emission sources. Going back over to electric cars these days, they have a decent amount of range on them with the most amount of range coming from the new Mercedes X, being able to run for around 320 miles on a full battery. DC chargers can give you 80% charge in around half an hour, but most of the public ones are a lot slower, and it's even worse if you have to charge from home. The Mercedes X would take about five hours to charge using a 22 kilowatt wall box. And what happens if you don't have a driveway to charge your car on? Exactly. And that's where e-fuel comes back in. You just refill your car, like any old combustion engine, down your local fuel station, but with the amount that needs to be produced and then developed into fuel stations around the world to be able to supply e-fuel will take years. No, it will take decades before that even happens. The first big hurdle we'll be tackling is the idea of mass production around the world. Now this could cause major problems for oil-rich countries, such as Saudi Arabia. It paves the way for all sorts of interesting future developments, for sure, and it leaves the door open for people whose jobs or lifestyles aren't compatible with electric cars. The conversation around cars has just done a huge U-turn indeed. Are electric vehicles the future for cars, or is it the idea of this new e-fuel that Porsche are producing? Comment down below your thoughts and opinions towards this whole matter. But before you go, take a look at this graph. Only 1% of viewers are subscribed. Like, come on, 99% of you guys are not subscribed. We are so close to getting this channel to 1,000 subscribers if that happens. I can start putting more money and production value into these videos. So quickly, subscribe now!